Am I the a-hole for not taking down my video that was a gift from my best man? I have a sister that's six years older than me. My parents for years cancel on me last minute because of my sister. I have a basketball game? Oops, sorry. Sister doesn't feel like going out. I am graduating? Oops, sorry. Sister had a bad day at work. They have missed both major and smaller events in my life because of her meltdowns. I met the love of my life and we decided to tie the knot. From the beginning, I told my parents that I am worried my sister will ruin another special moment in my life. My mom told me over and over again it would not happen. The day of my wedding, I received a voicemail from my mom saying they couldn't come because my sister's dog was sick and she was upset. I was hurt. My best man, however, is a jokester. He took my phone, then went to my fiancé and then asked if he could post a video of our wedding as a gift on social media. She loved his idea, but I had no idea about it until I came home. Our honeymoon was at a lakeside cabin with no cell service. The post caption was, My best friend. He is an amazing person even if his parents never showed up for him. Video was still pictures of us next to my wife's parents. Me on the dance floor, cutting the cake. Where you would normally see both parents in the wedding pictures. The sound behind the video was my mom's voicemail explaining how they couldn't come because my sister's dog was sick. I came home a week later to hundreds of messages. Family members from both sides insisting I take it down. I was told my sister hasn't stopped crying and my mom is refusing to leave the house. I may be the a-hole here, but I didn't take it down when I got my messages. I didn't call my family back right away. I waited until my vacation time was over at work and enjoyed my time with my wife in our new home before I contacted anyone. My dad told me to take down the video saying it was just a bad night for them, that they will make it up to meet my wife for not coming. My reply was, Exactly how do you plan to make up my wedding? It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. You choose to ignore my feeling on the whole matter. Then he just repeated that he will make it up to me. So I told him I would take down the video only when he made up missing my wedding. Flustered, we both hung up the phone before we both said things we shouldn't have. Am I the a-hole here? I could have just taken down the video. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. The truth hurts sometimes and your parents and sister just got whammied. Your friend is awesome. Please leave the video up. This. Your friend didn't manipulate their words. Your parents would have nothing to cry about if they hadn't done anything wrong. They skipped your wedding with one seriously pathetic excuse. Let them feel the effects of that. Your friend is the true MVP in this story. OP, keep that video up until the end of time. Your parents need to be reminded just how much they failed you and favored your sister. Your family doesn't like it. Lucky for you, you just married into a new one. Not the hall. Oh, not only would I leave it up, but would start a YouTube channel and add to it. You know, when you post holiday pictures with your mom speaking over it with, sorry, we can't make it, Sissy has a pimple. Or when you post baby pictures with mom slash dad saying, sorry, but Sissy is having a bad hair day. Post links here, Facebook, Twitter, monetize it to make a nice nest egg and enjoy your life Sissy free. Not day hole. They were finally called out on their blatant favoritism and they obviously didn't take it well. I'd hold off inviting them anywhere or to anything OP, at least for a while. Don't make them your first priority when you clearly aren't theirs. Focus on your new wife and your absolutely awesome friend. They both sound like keepers. To be honest, my parents missing my wedding because my sister's dog was sick and she was sad would probably be no contact worthy for me. Especially if my sister was six years older than me. If she was four and the family pet was dying, it may be understandable. But a grown woman needing both her parents to be consoled because her dog wasn't well? Jesus. Blatant golden child slash black sheep BS going on there. Daughter gets pandered and spoiled since her birth, to the point of her taking it absolutely for granted. Son gets neglected and emotionally mistreated, to the point of him knowing better than to expect anything from his parents at all. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister to adopt kids if she wants them so much? My 35 female sister Hannah, 28 female, went through a horrible divorce in 2021 and lost her home. I let her live with me for two years so she could save some money for a new home. I'm a single mother of two girls, nine and four. We had more than enough space for one more person, so we were happy to have her. She helps around the house, pays some of the bills, even though I told her she doesn't need to and is generally sweet. My daughters love her too. 
She works part time, and since she spends many hours at home, she willingly took up the role of a babysitter so I wouldn't have to pay for a nanny slash daycare anymore. Of course, I was happy with this. On to the issue. I'm glad she takes such good care of my daughter, but sometimes I think she takes it too far. She started asking to tag along to school events for my eldest, which wasn't a problem until she started introducing my kids as hers. I talked to her about it and told her it's confusing for teachers if they have contradicting information about who my kids' parents are. She stopped, but only for a while until I learned my new neighbors think she's my kid's mom. I was floored yesterday when my youngest called her mommy in my presence. I asked Hannah what was going on and brushed it off saying toddlers often look at random women and say mama or random men and say dada. I instantly knew that was a lie because my daughter has never called anyone else mommy. While I was helping my eldest with homework, she told me her sister only calls Hannah mommy because Hannah told them to call her that in public and she was scared to tell me because Aunt Hannah will get mad. I was furious. I confronted her immediately and her response is along the lines of, you should be happy to treat them well enough for them to see me as a second mother. You girls are happy to have a second mom as well. And I just love kids. I was fuming. And in the heat of the argument, I told her if she wants kids so much, she should adopt some of her own. I admit this was mean since she can't have kids and it was part of what caused her divorce. And my family has been calling and texting and calling me cruel for what I said. But I also feel she needed to hear this. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. I've said it before on this sub and I'll say it again. A family member on my boyfriend's side was like this with our daughter. The end result? She called the cops on me and tried to have my daughter removed and given to her. Nip it in the bud now, because Aunt Han is acting very weird. Not day haul for reasons like this. Though she isn't a grandparent, if you end up kicking her out, the closer your sister is to them, she could end up trying to file some demand for visitation like a grandparent's right suit. She has crossed a line and clearly thinks she has done absolutely nothing wrong. Get her out before she gets enmeshed enough that a court thinks it is in the best interest of the children for her to have access to them. Not day haul and kick her out. She told Opie's kids to keep a secret from Opie or else she'd get mad at the kids. Even without the secrets being you must call me mom, that's enough reason to not want her around the kids. Yes, the secret part freaked me out big time. Incredibly worrisome. I think sister needs to see a therapist about some stuff. It's terrible that she can't conceive. Plus, adding on the divorce to her mental load might have made her crack a bit. Until then, I'd go low contact at least because that behavior is crazy. Not the a-hole, OP. Next story. Am I the a-hole for siding with my mom over my wife and telling my wife it was her fault for putting me on a spot? My wife and I try to always side with each other in public. And if there's an issue, talk it out in private. So maybe I messed up here. My mom lives an eight-hour plane right away. So if she is going to visit, it is going to be for at least four to five days to make it worth it. My mom is the one who moved, and my wife made it clear when she moved that she needs to be the one to come to us as she made a choice to move, doesn't have small kids, and has the ability to work when she wants with no set schedule. My mom rolled her eyes, but agreed. My wife also told me that we would not be altering our lives to revolve around my mom. While she's welcome to visit, we will not use up our limited vacation time which we want to use to do things with our kids, and it isn't our job to entertain her. I felt weird about it, but agreed. My mom visited one time, three years ago. We went to work as normal and she was alone in the house during the day. By the time we got home, she was clearly bouncing off the walls and about to lose it. We did our normal chore slash routine, though my wife did take over some of my duties so I could visit. We had our normal blah week night meals, and by the end of the trip, my mom was clearly miserable, overtired and starving. She just didn't eat much. I don't know why. She didn't complain but seemed pissy. Then COVID happened. Both of us were busy and we just didn't see each other. We recently invited her to visit again, and my mom said sorry, but no. She said it was torture, and if we can't put in the effort to host her, she isn't coming. I felt that was fair, as she didn't make any demands on us. She just chose not to come, but my wife was very upset. My wife wanted me to confront her about how entitled she was being. I refused, so she called my mom and accused her of being childish and needed constant entertainment. My mom and her got into it, with my mom yelling that we were horrible hosts, and she was so bored she actually cried one day. 
She said she doesn't owe us her time if we don't want to put time into her, and she will never visit again unless something changes. But we have an open invitation to visit her. My wife asked me if I was going to get involved. My mom said I need to get my wife to stop attacking her. My wife demanded to know whose side I was on and I said my mom's. My mom began laughing. My wife teared up and hung up. Now she feels I betrayed her and that I'm a mama's boy, though I haven't even seen my mom in three years. I told her it is her fault for putting me on the spot and I just think my mom is entitled to the boundary if she doesn't want to visit. Now for the comments. I mean, if you want to plan things and host your mom with activities and great meals, what is stopping you? It seems to me like your wife doesn't want to be expected to drop all her responsibilities to plan, prepare, and be the host, a role that women have been conditioned to take automatically. I would also guess that your wife may feel daunted by what hosting usually means for her. Personal time off? Sure, but also planning activities, reservations at meals, cleaning and setting up guest room, cooking slash grocery shopping, ensuring the kids have the right balance of grandparent time, educational time, downtime, etc. That's stressful. If you want your mom to come, have a conversation with your wife about how to ensure you can be welcoming and gracious hosts without overburdening your wife. Meaning you take on more of these responsibilities because it's your mom. His wife. She runs Opie's life. We will never take the kids to visit your mother. We won't be taking any PTO during your mother's visits. We won't in any way alter our daily routines and will behave as if your mother isn't here. Now that your mother's feelings have been hurt by my design, I will yell at her for having those feelings and taking steps to avoid a repeat. I will rub salt in the wound by instructing you to tell her that you agree with me. Eh, I don't know. I think there's more to the story. Clearly, the wife and mother-in-law don't have a good relationship. So there must be background as to why wife is being like this. If my mother-in-law moved away, I'd likely have the same restrictions in place. I'm not very confrontational, so it may not come across the same way, etc. But my mother-in-law is awful to me. She doesn't respect my boundaries or the ones I've set for my daughter. She has made racist comments and comments about my appearance for years, and that's not something I'm comfortable existing around on a frequent basis. I'm also not going to go out of my way to go visit someone who makes me uncomfortable and feel less than. I think the situation was handled poorly and that there isn't one particular person that's at fault here but Opie is definitely in a hole. All of his mother's complaints are ones he could have solved if he wanted to rather than shift the blame onto his wife. Everyone sucks here. Your mom navigated airports and getting to you. Is she incapable of renting a car? Using one of yours? Your mom was starving because she expected someone to shop and cook for her. She's acting super entitled and that her visit required everyone to drop what they were doing for her. Sounds like she is high maintenance and your wife had her number even before your mom moved away. I will say your wife saying that you couldn't take time off when your mom visited was wrong. Maybe you don't take a full week off as PTO is precious, but a couple of days wouldn't have been inappropriate. She also was foolish to call your mom and argue with her instead of just leaving it alone. You are the a-hole because you denigrated your wife in front of your mother. Plus, not helping your mom have a better trip the first time around. We'll talk about all this later, or let's end this call and speak again another time. Or a zillion other non-committal answers were better than saying, I'm on my mom's side. I'd go to counseling with your wife if I were you. Both of you have stuff to apologize for. But your mother is the biggest a-hole. She's driving a wedge in and she knows it. And you fell for it. Last story. Am I the a-hole for being strict with one daughter and lenient with the other? I, 44, female, am the mother to two wonderful girls. For the sake of privacy, call them Claire, 16, female, and Lucy, 15, female. I love them both very much, but I do not treat them the same. This is because their interests are different. Claire is not very good at school. She is always getting bad grades, and she simply can't focus. At first, we thought it was ADHD, but it turns out she's just not very academically gifted. On the other hand, Lucy is amazing at school consistently. Top of her class, gets a 4.0 GPA, perfect grades and all that. So what we have started doing is treating them differently. We realize that Claire is probably not going to university. I don't think she has good enough grades to get in. It wants to go to trade school anyway. So we respect that and allow her to go out and hang out with her friends. But because Lucy is so gifted, we have taken the opportunity to nurture her genius. We signed her up for a sort of math slash robotics camp. We asked her to do the next year's homework to stay ahead, 
We encourage her to do extracurricular activities. We get her to train for academic competitions. Everything. A bit more controversially, they have different screen time limits. As Lucy is taking more academically rigorous coursework and needs to study and focus more. We live in the Bay Area, so it is very competitive to go to university here, which is why we are pushing her so much. We know she will thank us later in life that we have given her a good environment to encourage her intellect. The problem is that Lucy and I got into a fight, where she asked me why Claire is allowed to go out and do non-academic things, and I replied that the reason is because they don't have the same ambitions. Lucy got mad and told me I was favoring Claire over her, to which I replied that was not true. Truth be told, I love both of them equally and I want the best for both of them. But realistically, if Lucy doesn't spend her time preparing college apps, doing extracurriculars and using her intellect, she's wasting it. While Claire doesn't need to spend as much time on her future as there is much less uncertainty. I feel bad. And while I know I'm doing the right thing, at a core I feel like there might be something wrong with the way we have approached Lucy's education. Am I the a-hole? Edit, people are accusing me of abandoning Claire. Claire knows and agrees with this arrangement, as I have looked into options for community college or trade school with her. Her GPA is not good enough for any university and she knows it. I am in no way insulting her. She is very much aware of her situation. She is very pragmatic and responsible. Uh, no. Giving up on one daughter while micromanaging and pushing another is not treating them fairly. It is fine to treat your children differently as long as you treat them fairly, but you are not doing that. You're the home. Putting all your expectations in one child while giving up on the other is terrible parenting. Opie, I was ready to say not the a-hole if you were pushing Claire to try and achieve more, but you're the a-hole. A major one at that. Lucy is doing well in school, but you putting extra weight of academic responsibilities on her is going to result in her rebelling. It's better to give her some freedoms. Sit with her and discuss with her what her academic goals are. If they are to get into a top university like Harvard, then yes, tell her she will need to focus more on her schoolwork. But if she's hoping to get into another university, work out what the workload she's going to need for that is, and ask if she's willing to right now put that effort in. Lucy needs to be a part of this conversation of how much time she's dedicating to her schoolwork. Otherwise, she won't be able to fully understand its value. And she will lose motivation and her intellect will seem like a burden to her rather than a gift. Universities also like to look at people who have life experience. Focusing 100% on school and extracurricular doesn't always pay off. Also, don't lose sight of her personal mental health. Being able to have some personal time